On an archaeological dig along the route of HS2, archaeologists have uncovered signs of occupation from the prehistoric to the 19th century. Early excavations revealed signs of Bronze Age, Iron Age and Roman people, but what archaeologists didn't expect to find were the well-preserved remains of an extensive Elizabethan garden. With comparisons to Kenilworth Castle and even Hampton Court Palace, our team of archaeologists led by Wessex Archaeology have revealed ornamental Elizabethan gardens of national significance. So join me as we explore these tremendous gardens and the aristocratic families who walked in them as we uncover the history of Colesall's past. So Stuart, tell me a little bit about where we are, because all I can just see is some bricks and ground beneath me. So we're currently in the back wing of the house, so the back right, or the back right wing of the manor house. So this is the latest phase of the house that we know about. It's made of red brick, which is probably from the kind of late 1600s, maybe 1700s. And it's the final phase when the Digbys are expanding the house before it finally kind of goes into ruins and they just have tenants in the house. Are we seeing any examples in the features that you're uncovering of how the Digby family are expanding the property? So we're seeing quite a lot of different examples of how they're expanding the property. So in this instance, we're getting kind of red brick and this is how they're building this area out. But in other areas, we're seeing that they're reusing stone and that can be kind of grey sandstone, red stone, and that's from the earlier phases of the house. But we believe now that the majority of the house was a timber framed house and much of that is actually gone now and we're only left with these red brick structures at the back of the house, which are the two wings. And do we know what this room might have been used for? So we suspect this room would have been part of the chambers of kind of the actual owners of the house. So we believe you'd be able to sit here and look out over your gardens that extended right on into the distance behind you. They would have had this fantastic view out over their land and into the pond and the moats that we have behind us as well. So this would have been a great spot to look out over everything that you've done. And because it's slightly elevated, you would be able to see all the geomet geometric patterns of the gardens really well from this point. So would this position of the wing have been uh, connected to the gardens in any way by having that special view? So it would have been. There's one quite interesting thing about this area and it's all the brick plimps that run along to the right hand side of us now. And what it appears to be is the external western gardens that extend right out into the distance. They're almost split into two different areas. So they're split into like one section to the right and one section to the left. And it appears that this wall was a big dividing line. So it would have forced your view down just to one section of the garden. So when you went into other areas, you'd be able to see different sections of it. So just giving you this kind of element of different geometric patterns and kind of the element of surprise when you have visitors to show around your gardens. Wow, and, and do we know any about, about the status of the family who lived here? Yeah, they were really high status and we know that they did a lot of work in the kind of the local area for the local community and kind of with charity as well. But we know kind of the construction methods they're using, kind of the brickwork is just fantastic. And there's some really good quality sandstone and ashlar that we've seen here. And some of the pottery and the glass that we've seen has been exceptional. The, the kind of thinness of the glass that we've had, I haven't seen anywhere else. It's just so well made. And it's almost like little pieces of stained glass window that you would find in the church that you can just imagine kind of in this wing. So you'd be looking out through these little pieces of glass um, that went out into the gardens. And this is something that hasn't been seen or looked through in kind of, kind of two, three, four, five hundred years. So are we looking at, at an Elizabethan manor house in this area then? So Elizabethan's quite difficult. So we know the house is here in the Elizabethan period, but we suspect at the moment there's phases that are Elizabethan, but the majority of it might be slightly later. So we might be looking at the Jacobean periods or even towards the Reformation and those periods. So it looks like it's a consistent or consistent development over time. So they're starting with a smaller building, adding wings on over time as their wealth increases and their status gets higher. 
And I can see there's perhaps what looks like tiles or brick in front of us. Is this, is this the floor surface? So it's quite interesting. So the ones that we're looking out kind of at us now, that these are actually the footpath leading to the back door of the house. So you would have led, walked out from the kind of the back gardens along this footpath to the back door that's here. And what's quite interesting is we actually have a sketch of this back door um, that's been kindly sent to us. And that image just shows the back door really well and kind of this whole wall structure around here and then vines growing up the walls, creating like this really nice kind of image of what the house would have looked like and quite a pleasant garden that you would have had. And you would have been able to access it from this path that's right in front of us now. Amy, so I can see that we're standing in what is now called the, the Great Hall. Can you tell me a little bit about the archaeology that I can see in front of me? Absolutely, yeah. So Great Hall, generally, we've got a size of maybe about 8 metres by 12 metres long. Um, and in the centre of that, there is this massive stone structure here. It would have been a bit bigger, um, but what we've got left is on the right-hand side, uh, stone hearth, and then on the left-hand side, uh, on-edge sandstone uh, fireplace. So we imagine kind of like those medieval banquet halls, things like that. Is it, it similar to this? I think so, yeah. I think you're imagining something really glamorous and beautiful, but at the end of the day, there was absolutely zero chance of getting this smoke out of the room. So the room would have been really smoky. There was no sort of traditional chimney. That all kind of happened around the great rebuild. Um, where they moved the chimney um, and the hearth to the to the side of the wall, so they could actually get the um, the, the smoke out. But so it's dark, yeah. dingy, absolutely middle ages, oh, eating meat off the bone. A bit more like that rather yeah. than your traditional happy, colourful banquet. I'm sure they had a lot of beautiful food, but realistically, you would not have been able to see a lot of it because of the smoke. <laughs> um, yeah, and so this is, this is where the Lord and Lady would have held court. Absolutely, held so. Power we're thinking more towards the northern end they would be sat um, and then uh, at the southern end that's where your sort of audience would be where they would hold whole court um, and then further further back there was a sort of screen area and that's where the peasants would be would be standing as well wow. but, so they wouldn't have a great view but the guys in the front that were a little bit more lord, lords and ladies they'd be able to have a really nice view again when the fire's perhaps not lit um, they'd be able to see <laughs> see the lord and lady and what's going to happen to all this kind of dark sooty layer? Because that's presumably contemporary to when the people were having these kind of dark banquets. Yeah, I mean, the extent of it is absolutely incredible. It's, it's, it's swept pretty much the entire limit of the walls of both the, the west and east side. So the idea is, is that we're going to um, continue where we're standing. We're going to continue excavating, um, doing a single context method. So we're going to take down the lay that we're on now to reveal the full extent of the black. Then we're going to um, set up a grid system. And then within each grid, we're going to be taking bulk samples. And hopefully from that, we'll be able to find out if there is anything else in there that can tell us a bit more about the date of this. What, what could it be? Would it be like what they're eating, what they're drinking? Yeah, absolutely. Things that they're eating, um, anything that they might have dropped at the time, like all that kind of thing um, within a sort of microscopic scale. And also what we're seeing when we're actually um, troweling, it's absolutely beautiful to trowel. It's, it, it peels off and when something sort of stands out that dramatically, a bit of iron, a bit of pot, um, you can pick that out straight away. So that kind of thing we're finding by eye but anything we can't see hopefully they'll be able to tell us post excavation and just to kind of sum up what what is it like digging on a site like this i wish i had words um honestly <laughs> it's it's so it's so incredible like i think you do have to step back a little bit obviously we cover this up every day but when you do get a chance to re uh, reveal it and it just looks like this it does really take your breath away like it's beautiful and i don't think we're ever going to come across anything like this again <laughs> certainly not um, certainly not in, in, in my kind of career. I can't imagine that I'm going to be able to work on a site like this with a team like this. It's been, it's been awesome. It's been really, really good fun. Um, and we've just learned so much from the area and from each other. It's been good.